Welcome back YouTube. My name is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to have a look at object oriented programming and the constructor. So what we're going to do is to create an other class. So far we had only our public class new behavior script, which is a fine class. It does what it should. It uses the start method and that's all good, but we want to create our own object of human. We want to create a class for that, which is going to be the blueprint of a human object. And that human could be, I mean, it could be a player human, or it could be, you, you could replace human with whatever you want. You could replace it with car or whatever, if you want to create a different class. But now let's just go ahead and create a human class, and then you can try to rebuild that for a different kind of class. So let's create one, and I'm gonna make it public so that it can be accessed from outside. So that means that our new behavior script can access it. So public class human is the name of the class. And now that class can have multiple variables. So what kind of variables could a human have? What kind of information of a human would be relevant? I'd say one of the important things is the age and maybe the name and well, based on the country you live in, the, the job should be quite important. So in some countries, jobs are more important than in others. In other countries, it's more about fiesta and celebrating. That's a great lifestyle as well. But in Germany, for example, the job, the car, those kind of things are super important. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create a constructor for this human, which will be very important. You will see why. So let's go ahead and so now let's create a constructor and you will see why it is important. I'm going to call it human. And why is that? That is because the class itself is called human and the constructor does always have the same name as the class. And it's really important that it's written exactly the same way. Well, that human, it, he has multiple attributes and those attributes are age, name, job and so on. So what I want to have is every time that somebody creates an object of that human, I want those values to be set. So that means I need to enter int h, int my h, for example, then string my name and string my job. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So that would, that would be the basic structure of my constructor. Now, of course, I get all those values. And what I want to do is I want to set those as the attributes of my human object. What I say here is h is equal to my h and name is equal to my name. And finally, job is equal to my job. So what I do with that is Whenever somebody creates an object outside of this class, so maybe in here, for example, so within our new behavior script, I create an object of human. So now let's go ahead and just do that. Maybe it's best to just see how that works. So we create a human and I'm going to call that human one or you, well, human one is a fine name. I think it's a great name for an object <laughs> and that human it's going to be a new human object. So I create a new human and now you see it needs an age, it needs a name and it needs a job. So the first human is going to be, let's say 15. His name is called Hans and or he's called Hans and his job is student. So he's still going to school. And now we create another human object, which I'm going to call human two, new human and now that one is, let's say 30, it's called Sissy, which is a brilliant name. And then the job is maybe architect. So Sissy is an architect. So now we have created those two human objects and we could access its variables. We could access the age variable, the name variable and the job variable. Well, not so easy because they are not public. So let's try that. Let's debug log human one dot name and you see I get an error here I cannot I cannot access the name of my human why not 
well because it's not public so now let's make it public and let's see ah, there you are the error disappeared so now I can access the name of any human because the name is public wow that's not secure anymore so now everybody can know my name well that's how it is that's how we set it up <laughs> and you could do the same thing for the job you can do the same thing for the age you would just have to make them public all right so that's the basic concept of object-oriented programming so you have a set of attributes and you have a constructor in which you assign those attributes whenever you create an object of that class and of course a human cannot only have attributes he also has capabilities or skills and he can do things so for example a human can breathe a human can go do his job a human could whatever whatever you can think of so let's say we create a new method called void work and that method will not do anything except for just saying debug.log I am or I'm plus name plus and my job is plus job so that's the only thing that this work method does so now if I try to access that so let's do that human one dot work and as you can see it doesn't work why not well again because our void method here work and I should use a capital W work is not public so let's make it public now human one dot work and great we can access the method work so now let's try and run that in unity and we can see the name is Hans that's great and then I'm Hans and my job is student and that's exactly what we have here with work and if we do the same thing so if we call the work method for human 2 we'll get a different result so now let's run it I'm sissy and my job is architect great so now we have those two what one power of object-oriented programming is it is that you can have the same method which does deliver different results based on the object that you're using or based on the instance of the class that you're using so human one is an instance of our human human two is another instance of human is another object of human so now we have multiple instances two in this case and they have different types of values and you could create multiple more objects of human and each with individual values here and that's the basic concept of object-oriented programming and we're going to use that in some of the games that you will build in the next chapters so try to build the same thing so please go ahead as a little challenge try to create a class called car and then make multiple cars all right so create within your start method create multiple car objects or instances of the car class of course you can create your very own attributes for a car it could be color it could be brand it could be how much how much horsepower it has and maybe in which year it was built those kind of things and of course you can create your own methods which could be for example drive or it could be for example play music all those kind of things so please go ahead and try that and then share what you have built i would really like to see what you came up with i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then please leave a like and if you have any questions or suggestions then leave a comment and of course don't forget to subscribe and by the way if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it then of course check out the link in the description to my whole course see you in the next video